Hello and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you. It's going to be with you. Hope you're today with Vin Grand and all is well in your world. Hello there, everybody. Uh, today, new guitar, everybody. As you can see, it's an SG, um, but it's not a Gibson. Can I introduce you to the Rose Morris SG? Uh, this is a lawsuit model, this one, and uh, you can see why this is a lawsuit model. It's rather close to a Gibson. Anyway, I bought this this guitar today um, just because it's absolutely awesome. It's a bolt-on neck, uh, and it has the Gibson headstock as well. So that's another reason why it's a lawsuit model, is that Gibson, like, you can't do that. Uh, so they weren't allowed to do that. So this is a lawsuit guitar. Um, I bought this from the original owner today. Uh, he had it. He said he's had it since he was 10 years old. And uh, I'm very, very honoured and very, very happy to give it uh, its new home. And um, I'm definitely not going to get rid of this guitar. The neck is fantastic. The playing action is fantastic. I love the sound. I'm pretty sure these are single coils. I'm pretty sure they're not humbuckers. But I like that. Um, and, uh, and I've always wanted an SG. I've always wanted an SG. And I've owned a few. I have owned a few. But... Um, they've never been what I wanted um, in an SG. Uh, I've always wanted Wine Red Batwing Pit Guard, which is what this has. It's called the Batwing Pit Guard because it was like a bat's wing. And I've always wanted that. I've always wanted it. And I've never been able to find one that wasn't Gibson. You know, like, I've always kind of like struggled to find one that wasn't Gibson. So when this came up um, for sale, I was like, I'm having that, you know, and it was a really good price. The original owner was an awesome guy. It was really quite a bit of a chat with him and he's really, really cool. He's a, he's a jazz uh, or probably bass player. And um, like I said, I'm very, very honored to give this guitar its new home and play it and love it. And I already know that I'm gonna get on with this guitar. I've strummed a couple of chords on it, nothing major. It needs a bit of, uh, it needs a bit of work doing to it. I need to clean up the switch pots uh, the, the, the the parts, the, I need to clean up the switch. Uh, I could do with a little bit of a clean. Uh, I'm going to uh, restring it as well. I'm going to put some um, new strings on it. Uh, clean up, uh, condition the fretboard and stuff like that. Check the truss rod's okay and stuff like that. So what I thought I'd do is I'd do that on video um, uh, to show, show you what I'm doing, basically. So, um, yeah, this guitar has been played, and it's been played a lot, and it, it's been loved, and that's awesome. And the fact I bought it from the original owner is really, really cool. But yeah, like I say, this is a Rose Morris SG coffee made in Japan. Um, as I say, it's a bolt on neck, uh, which I really like. I like bolt on necks. Um, you know, set necks are okay, but I do like bolt on necks. But this is uh, serial number 1076. Um, and I really, really love this guitar. Uh, is the light going weird? Am I orange? Is that orange? I don't know. It should be okay. Um... Okay, so yeah, so without further ado, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the strings off. And I love where the strap button's located, just on the neck. Um, I'm going to get the strings, get the old strings off, get some, uh, clean the fretboard up, clean the body up. Uh, I'm going to clean the pots and the slit switch, selector switch last. Uh, I want to get the strings, these old strings off, um, get the fretboard cleaned up and go from there. So, uh, so let's get on with that. But as I say, just one more thing quickly before I do it. Like, I am very, very honoured. And the original owner of this guitar was a really cool guy. And if he's watching, thank you very much. I will cherish this guitar very much. And it's... I already know I'm going to love it. I already know I'm going to love it. And, uh, yeah, really, really cool. So, without further ado, let's get these old strings off. Um, oh, and by the way, we've got nylon saddles on this uh, this guitar. They're not metal saddles, we've got nylon saddles. Uh, I had a Columbus SG that had nylon saddles and it do change the sound of the guitar. I find it's um, a warmer, warmer sound. So, um, yeah, so let's get these strings off and go from there. So, um, yeah, so everything's in shops, isn't it? Yes, good. Okay, so, uh, original machine heads. They feel really good, actually. So, winding down. Uh, the original owner did say it'll need some switch cleaner uh, in the pots and the, and the selector switch, so um, so we'll, we will do that at the end. Once it's restrung and cleaned up, um, we will go into the cavity 
check the pots, making sure everything's okay in there. I mean, if the thing works, I've plugged it in. I haven't played anything on it. I just wanted to hear it make a noise. Uh, I want the first thing I play on it to be... I don't know yet, but I want, you know, I want it to be kind of like, you know, ready. You know what I mean? So, uh, so yeah. So, uh, let's get these, let's get, keep getting these strings off. Okay. Winding, winding, winding. Oh, and by the way, everybody, uh, I won't be restringing it with Diodario strings, as I haven't been able to get a hold of any. Uh, so, I'm going to restring it today with, I've got cash converter sticker on it, that's good. Oh, I can't get it off. But I'm going to use Ernie Ball today. Uh, and I'm using 9 to 42s because it's a Gibson scale length, so I don't want to put 10s on it. And I don't really, because this guitar's uh, from the 70s, and it's an old guitar, the neck's quite skinny, uh, it's a bolt on neck. Uh, I don't really like the idea of using particularly heavy strings on it, so I'm going to put use 9s on it, and I like using 9s on Gibson scale length anyway. So, uh, so yeah, so, sucking the strings off. There is. So, pop the tail piece out. Okay. Get rid of these old strings. Put them down there. Nah. The owner knew how to wind strings on properly. Love it. Awesome. Yeah, because I've, I've bought guitars, I'm sure we all have at some point, where you've bought a second-hand guitar and you've gone to get the original, the old strings off it and someone's like tied a square knot in it and they're just like knotting it on. <laughs> um, I'm going to change the filter on the camera, it looks really orange. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I think that looks better. Uh, does that look better? I hope that looks better. I looked a bit orange near the wall. So, uh, so yeah, so tail piece is off. Oh, that's come out of the wood. That's okay, that's fine. I need one wheel as well. That's not a problem. We can sort that. Okay, so um, put them down here for the time being. Let's get the bridge off. Yep. Okay, and get these out as well. So I don't know much about Rose Morris guitars, um, other than the fact they were obviously, you know, they, they were imported uh, Japanese Gibson Fender copies. Um, cool, they're okay. So yeah, I, I don't really know much about them. I'll have to do a bit of research, and before I re review it properly, um, I'll uh, I'll do a bit of reviewing on it and uh, see what I can find out. See if we can pop these off as well. Yes, we can. Always got to be careful popping um, old uh, uh, well, uh, uh, dial covers off because they can be a bit. They can be very, very, very fragile, and if you're not careful, you can break them, and uh, they can split, and you don't want that. That's not. That's not cool. That's not a cool thing. So, this is where having long nails comes in really handy. Come on. Number one. Okay, and the last one. Get my nail under it. Try it. I say just very no. Wait, if you if if things aren't coming up, don't force it. You know, just leave it. But I I, I want to give us a good clean. So, okay, so uh, bridge off tail piece out. Um, let's see if the adjustment screws work. They should do. I highly doubt they don't. No, they work. That's all good. Okay, so that all works. So, going to uh, condition the fretboard now. I'm not going to take the neck off. There's no need to. Um, I'm pretty sure it's as straight as an arrow. Yep, nothing wrong with that neck. So I don't need to adjust the truss rod or anything like that. That's that's totally fine. But I do need to um, condition the fretboard a bit. It's um, it's not dry, but it could it could do a bit of a bit of a clean. So so let's condition the fretboard with this stuff which is awesome stuff and it's gone orange again oh, I can't do anything. I can't do anything right today with the light okay so um the best stuff I found for conditioning and cleaning fretboards is this crimson guitar stuff it's absolutely amazing this is fin uh, fretboard and finish uh, fretboard and finish cleaner so and I love it it's really really cool and basically what you do is you just like spray it on onto the neck
And you can put up the body as well. We'll do that in a minute. Okay, I can't get... For some reason, this light in here is just not working. It's not playing ball today. Okay, so... Um, moving along with the cleaning. Uh, I'm on the body. So, uh, the fretboard... What is this stuff again? Just cleaner, isn't it? Uh, the fretboard and finish cleaner. It's soaked into the neck. I've cleaned it off. Uh, I do need to go in and just get some of the the, the old... Uh, the finger, finger dirt out and stuff like that in a minute. But I'm just focusing my efforts on cleaning up the body at this point in time. And it's coming up an absolute treat. It really is. It looks absolutely stunning. I've got to say, the owner of this guitar has kept this guitar in such good condition. I My hat comes off to him. It really does. Because a lot of these old guitars, these, you know, these Rose Morrises, you know, Tysco guitars, um, you know, K's, stuff like that, they weren't, they weren't, you know... They, it's going to sound really strange, but I don't feel like most of them were built to last. Do you know what I mean? They, were, they you know, they're very kind of, you know, they were cheaply made, you know, copies of well-known brands. So, you know, they were invariably all bolt on necks and even the Les Pauls and stuff like that. And they were never kind of like intended to kind of like be a, a long-term instrument, if that makes any sense whatsoever. But the, th the fact is, it's like, you know... And it's the same with any guitar, really. When when you look after an instrument, it will look after you. You know what I mean? It's it's one of those things. And um, the man on my arm, Miyamoto Masashi, who was a samurai, would always talk. He talks in his book of the Five Rings how, like you know, it's important to, you know, he talks about how it's important as a, for a samurai to look after his sword. And the samurai believed the sword was their soul anyway. So you know. Um, it, you know, it, it was part of them. And I feel that, yeah, that translates really neatly over to guitar because the guitar is part of you. You know, when you're playing it, it becomes a part of you. It's, it's an extension of your being. And not to sound too zen on you, but um, that's exactly what the guitar is. So looking after your instrument, like, you know, keeping it, you know, in the best condition you can, keeping it, you know, as clean as you can, uh, and just keeping it running correctly is, is is the key. And yeah, as long as you kind of look after it, it will look after you, says say. And and this is a great example of that because this guitar, um, uh, the owner said he bought it in the uh, late seventies. I forget the exact. I think it was seventy seven, but I don't, I can't remember. It was late seventies anyway when he bought it. Um, you know, it, it's. So if it's late 70s, it's good 40-odd something odd years old. So it's like, you know, and it just goes to show this thing's still live, alive and kicking, and it's just like, that's awesome. That is absolutely awesome. And I say, I mean, just a little bit of cleaning just now has just brought this thing right back up to kind of like, you know, shiny, shiny, shiny condition. It's ridiculously shiny. Awesome. Love it. This is absolutely good. Cool. I love this guitar so much. It's so cool, and um, yeah, this is amazing. I cannot wait. And this is always the thing: when I get a guitar like this, and I and I, I start kind of taking the strings off and cleaning it up, I'm always like, oh, I just want to play it now. Especially when it starts to shine up, you're like, oh, I just want to play it. I don't want to have to clean it anymore. But you know, you, you know, you know, you've kind of got to really. Uh, I'm impressed with the fact I don't have to walk the truss rod. That's in, that's insanely good. But again, it just goes to show. I mean, you don't need to walk the truss rod every time. I and mean, that's the thing is I don't understand people who constantly tweak on the truss rod. I mean, especially if a guitar never leaves a specific atmosphere or anything like that. But if it's not not broken, it doesn't need fixing. Again, creature of habit, Dave, coming out there. I do believe. Um, yeah, this is just. This is just gorgeous. This is apps. This guitar is gorgeous. It really is stunning. Let's get a bit more of that get out from that scratch plate. This is amazing. Oh my good gravy! Okay, this is coming up an absolute. Thing. I mean, it wasn't filthy, if I'm being perfectly honest. It just had, you know, it's just been used. You know, the usual wear and tear that you know you find on any any old instrument. 
but that has come up so clean. And again, I cannot rave enough about Crimson Guitars cleaning products. I really can't because I, mean, I don't know if I don't know if you'll be able to see. That is absolutely look look how shiny it is. It's so shiny. So beautiful. I do love it. I absolutely love it. Okay, so uh, that's the body cleaned. I'm not gonna do the back of the guitar yet. I do need to do the headstock and need to do the fretboard. Uh, the frets are fine, I'm not gonna, I don't need to polish them, I don't need to level them, they're all okay. I'm gonna clean the fretboard and I'll be back. Okay, so this thing has cleaned up really nicely. As you can see, there's me! It's just really, really cool. Uh, I do wanna get into the neck pickup cavity. Well, well I, need, I need to take the, the, the bat wing off because if you just look at the back, if you look at the bridge pickup, uh, the screws line up perfectly with the holes. On the neck pickup, they're a bit askew, so I want to see why that is. I want to get in there and have a look. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take the scratch plate off and have a look underneath here and see what's going on. But everything else has shined up perfectly. Uh, everything cleaned up really nicely. Headstock cleaned up nice. Fretboard is stunning. I don't know if I can get this in the light, but it's just shined up. There we go. A bit further out, Dave, because that's just going to blur. Shined up lovely. And it's really, really clean now. And these fret dots are absolutely stunning. And I love the fact they only go down to the 17th fret and then there's just nothing. Really, really cool. So, um, next thing. Let's get the scratch plate off. Let's have a look at this uh, net pickup and find out why this cover's sat a bit... Uh, a bit wonky, so to say. Let's have a look. Okay, so, final screw of the scratch plate of the bat wing. And out. So, the proper Tysco screws are really, really tiny. So, let's get this plate up and have a look underneath here. Okay. Yeah, we've got a lot of tape. It's like it's sellotaped in. That's really weird, I've never seen that before. I don't understand why that's like that. A lot of this. I don't understand what that is. We'll take out a look. The cavity is beautifully routed. Um, I don't know if you can see, but that is very nice routing. Let's get the, uh, the duster in there. I'm not gonna clean it massively under here there's no point but that is very nice routing and it's a two-piece body this there's uh, a piece on the top and a piece on the bottom i have no idea what the wood is it could be mahogany i doubt it but it, it's a very nice it's a solid body uh, guitar you know it, it's it's not a uh, it's not chipboard or oh plywood uh, plywood or anything like that it's real wood um so yeah, so anyway, let's, let's go back to this neck pickup and have a look. So that's a bit, that's just weirding me out a bit that there's, um, there's tape on it. I don't understand why it's there. It's, it's definitely sellotape. I don't really, it's look, it does look like it's keeping the pickup in, which is a little bit strange. Oh, it is. Okay, right, we're going to take this out and we're going to have a proper look at this. So I need a need my other screwdriver and we're going to take a look at this this pickup because there's something not quite right with it i don't know what it is there's massive springs look at those springs now you can see there that's a big pickup spring okay moving along base side okay okay, okay. so yeah, we're a single coil. There you go. There's the inside of one of these pickups. Um, okay, so that tape is on it for some reason. I don't know why. It's very messy. I mean, the, the, the bridge pickup doesn't have it. No, the bridge pickup doesn't have all this tape. I don't really know why it's on there, to be honest with you. Um, I'm, guessing it, I'm guessing it got put on there to protect the coil, but there's a problem with that. Ah... Okay, I think at some point the winding has come out of the pickup and um, I can see some of the the, 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 uh, the copper wiring has kind of come free. It's kind of all over the place and it looks like it's been kind of kind of taped taped in place. I don't know, maybe maybe something happened to the pickup at some point. I don't know. And the pickup cover is actually split is broken. This pickup cover's actually broken. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, we'll try and... 
Yeah, I can't line it up. That's okay. Okay. Well, I don't really know. I don't really know what to do with that because that's. I mean, as long as the thing works, I'm a happy bunny. You never know; it might have a really distinctive-sounding neck pickup because of this. But it is just a single coil, as you see. It's it's not a humbucker. They they um, it's all a, it's all a, it's all a cheeky uh, ruse to make it look like a humbucker when it's actually not. But I like that. Oh, I think that's cool. It adds, yeah. You know, it's a lot of character to these things because of stuff like that. I don't understand. I don't know, something, something's gone on at some point with this neck pickup and uh, I don't I don't really know I don't really know the fit of why it's been tried to be fixed like that with, with sellotape it's not it, it's obviously the, the sellotape's obviously been put on there to try and um, keep the keep the uh, the windings on and protect the windings but it's not really Sadly, it's not really worked very well. It's kind of, um, I don't know. I have a, oh, there we go. Oh, I've got a pickup cover back on. There we go. That's all right. I've got a sneaking feeling that uh, that's going to need rewinding at some point. Um, because I'd like to keep the original pickups because I like them. I like these old 70s uh, pickups. I think they're really, really cool. And I've got the cover back on in the right place, though, so that's cool. Yeah, we'll we'll see once it's once it's all kind of like you know, strung up and working. We'll we'll see how we go. So let's get these screws back in, and uh, yeah, just kind of put it back together really and see where we go. Because I there's no point in me trying to solder that pickup cover back onto the base of it because it's it's the the pickup cover itself is actually broken, and uh, I can imagine any other one I've got. Of Gibson spec or Epiphone spec will not fit because you know these these guitars don't they were never really kind of like there are all sorts of different weird measurements used on these guitars and I can imagine the string spacing for this one would be unlike any of the other pickup covers I have in my you know box of box of bits if you will so uh, so anyway, well, what we'll do is we'll just leave it for now and we'll see what happens when it when I've got it strung up and and uh, hooked in because you never know it might it might be dead it it, you know, it does make a noise I mean that's the thing when, when I plugged it in when I first got it home it, it did make a noise um, on both pickups and I didn't really play it because I just wanted to get it restrung and and cleaned up and sorted before I played it properly so we'll see but like I say, you never know. Because of that fix, it might have a really interesting neck pickup sound. And that has got me very, very interested. Very interested indeed. So I'm just going to wind this pickup up a smidgen because that's probably about where it wants to be. We'll see that when we, when we get it on. Right, okay, so what to do now? Everything's on. The fretboard's been cleaned and, and conditioned. Uh, I've also used this stuff. Uh, on the fretboard, it's uh, Crimson Guitars uh, fretboard restorative, and like, I, like you could, uh, hopefully, as you could see, it just makes this fret that makes your fretboard shine. It just gives the wood what it wants, and it just makes for a you know a smoother, nicer a fretboard. Uh, it really is awesome. So uh, so right, okay. So we've got the scratch plate back on. Can't do anything about that neck pickup, but I will keep it in mind. So got them back in. Got the covers back on. The whole guitar's cleaned up. Uh, thumb wheels. Get these thumb wheels on. I've got a sneaky suspicion these thumb wheels will have to be wound all the way down. So that's what I'm going to do. Because these guitars, in my experience, always have super high action on, on all the Columbus Les Pauls and all the cheapo Tysco guitars and stuff like that that I've had in the past. I've always had the thumb wheels all the way down. Okay, so. Get the bridge back on. Uh, the bridge cleaned up kind of okay. It could do with a little bit more, but I'm getting impatient. I want to know what this thing sounds like, especially after seeing that in the neck pickup. So, um, so we'll get the bridge back on. Nylon saddles, everybody. I don't know if I mentioned that already, but okay. So bridge back on. Let's go. I'm just. I'm just see if I can get some of this bit more of this dirt off. There we go. That's better. 
Okay, I, c I can live with that. It'll probably need. I'll probably have to intonate it as well. It's nothing major, though. Nothing major at all. Dust it off. Paintbrushes are awesome for getting rid of uh, dust and stuff. Absolutely. Would never, never be without a paintbrush in my guitar. Restringing thing ever again. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, so um, strings. Like I said, Ernie Ball today. Um, can't get any Diodario, sadly. So uh, Ernie Ball, next best thing for me. Uh, I would prefer Diodario, but such is life. I didn't open well. Okay, let's get in here. Um, oh, that's my uh, that's my phone reminding me to put a video up. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, okay. So. Um, like I said, I'm going to use nines on this because, like I said, I do prefer nines on a Gibson scale guitar, to be honest with you. Just, they feel nicer to me. Um, like I said, this is, like I say, I'm just going to reiterate what this guitar is really quickly. Cause what this is, is a, is a Rose Morris guitar. Um, and I say these were Japanese made guitars, and I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure they were uh, Taisco factory guitars. Not 100%, but I'm pretty sure of it. And uh, that, that string just stabbed me. Ow. Ooh. Sharp, sharp, sharp. Um, and I'm pretty sure Rose Morris was a... Uh, I don't know. English company? I don't know. Um, I forget. I totally forget because I'm not very clever. Uh, I, I know how to play guitars. I don't know much. I don't know much else. Okay, so... Um, so, yeah. I'm not doing top rap either. I don't like top rap. I don't see the point. Uh, myself, I don't feel any difference in top wrapping guitars of any description. But okay, so click that back in. Okay, string up. And I'm going to do the high E first. Move them out of the way. Okay, so I'm just going to get all these strings on, and I'll be back. And we are so close to hearing what this thing sounds like, and it's rather exciting. And I absolutely love the look of this thing. Oh, you! Gorgeous creature. Okay, back in a moment. Okay, so we are strung up. Uh, the string, the string alignment on this guitar is totally askew. The low E string only hangs off this side of the fretboard, and the high E string is really far on that side. So the neck's actually kind of not in the right place. But that's okay. We can deal with that. Um, strings are on. Let's cut the excess off because I don't like when strings poke out like that. It's just waiting to take your eye out. And they always say you should cut the strings as you're doing it, but I never do because I'm stupid. And there is, there's been times in the past where I've cut brand new strings. Okay, moving along. I just want to play this thing now. I want to know what it sounds like. Okay, so we are strung up and near enough ready to go. Uh, the thumb way, the thumb wheels all all the way down. It's gonna have to change. I really didn't expect that to so I'm gonna have to bring up the treble side. But that's okay. Okay. Really low. Okay. And we'll bring up the bass side as well because that looks weird. Ugh. There is a tool for this. And I should get one. <laughs> it is a nightmare to try and do it by hand. Come on, fun wheel, you know you want to. Actually. Whoa, we've gone too high. There we go. Okay, there we go. Right, okay, so I'm gonna get it in tune. Gonna tidy up, because it's an absolute pigsty in here. Uh, get it in tune, get the strings settled, and then. We will, oh yeah, I need to clean, I'll do that now actually. Before we get into the screen cell, let's check out the back cavity because I say the original owner said the, um, the, the pots might need a good, you know, going over with a switch cleaner and stuff like that. So we'll do that now. And I also want to see what kind of pots they are because I'm guessing they'll be just like little tiny things. There's a lot of screws in this back plate, I've got to say. A lot, a lot of screws. Keep on going. Oh, my eyes. My eyes hurt. Everybody. Okay, so pop us off. Oh, there we go. 
Boy, that's neat. That is neat. So we've got uh, four 500k pots. Very nice looking beefy selector switch. It needs a little bit of tightening. What's that? What is that? I don't know what that is. It's okay. I don't know what that is. Come on, out you come. A bit of dirt. I don't know what it is. Get off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me show you inside the cavity because it's really cool. Okay, I've got to be careful not to kind of shadow it, but this ca the cavity on the side is really clean. I'm gonna come over here, that might be a bit better. So you got uh say so we've got four. They are mini pots, but they look really good. They have a good they you know they look they look fine to me. The white the soldering job is awesome, the selector switch looks nice and and beefy and you know robust. Um Earth wire coming off the jack. That's interesting. Um Yeah, it's just a very neat job. There's no excess wire, there's nothing that doesn't need to be there. Awesome stuff. So let's give it uh let's give it some service on and just run the pots a bit. Spray the select switch from the other side as well. Okay, so that's in. They're done. Put the back plate back on. There's no point not staying open. I am so, so curious to know what this thing sounds like. Especially with that net pickup being the way it is. I mean, it, it does it does worry me that that is the way it is. Especially with some of the, like, you can see some of the uh, the copper winding has has come off the bobbin uh, but I do love the look of these pickups they're so cheeky in the fact that they're humbucker size but there's just one coil in there it's so cool uh, I think it actually gives it the guitar uh, these guitars like a real distinctive voice I don't know why it is I don't know you know if there's some kind of weird electrical thing about that I, don't, I have no idea uh, I just do think these old 70s pickups sound wicked and I love them very much oh yeah that's that's gone through is that catching on the finish or is that? No, there we go. There we go. And you. <sighs> okay, spray some in here. Just a little bit. Again, when you're using switch cleaner, you don't want tons and tons of it in there. You know, don't you don't want it so it's swimming. Yeah, just just enough. Ah, oh, feels better. It's kind of freed everything up a bit. Yeah, just just enough to kind of keep it, you know, just keep it nice. Okay, so strung up. Um, not gonna bother with intonation. The intonation kind of looks okay. Um, we're strung up. We're cleaned up. We're ready to go. Near enough. So I'm gonna get this guitar in tune, tidy up because it's an absolute pigsty, like I said. And then we'll work on some pickup heights as well. So, uh, so yeah, let's do that. I'll be back in a moment. Okie dokie, so uh, strings are kind of settled. This is the first time I've had a chance to kind of really feel the guitar. Uh, the strap button might have to be moved, as you can see. Where it is, is right in the way of playing down this high end. So I might have to move that back and into the body. The only problem with that is it's going to shift the guitar that way. Uh, but at this point in time, the guitar sits more like a strap. But... I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to shift it because it's too. It's too in the way. I'm gonna leave it there for time being, but I'm gonna shift it at some point. Um, the neck on this thing is super skinny. It's a super skinny neck. It's a. It's a real 70s SG neck. It really is. I mean, I can see why they the lawsuit guitars. I really can. It's so close to a Gibson. It's terrifying. Um, I haven't heard what it sounds like yet, but the neck pickup definitely works because I, I tuned the guitar using it. So um, we will see what it sounds like. I'm kind of wondering if it does have a unique kind of voice to it. Um, I've guesstimated on the pickup height. That might change. I've just realised I took my screwdrivers away, but that's okay. It's rich. It's a nice sound. You know, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Gets a bit rattly at the top end, but that's okay. We can sort that as well in in the future. At this point in time, this thing feels absolutely 
awesome. That is one skinny neck, man. That is a really skinny neck, man. I like it. Okay, so anyway, let's um, let's make some noise. Oh, crack tea pot. One second, everybody. It's got that Peter Green thing. That's a lot louder. guitar but that's okay it sounds wicked I mean it doesn't sound bad I do uh, that strap in the way that here is a little annoying I've got to say especially when you kind of want to get down this end it's it's, it's kind of in the way <laughs> Thank you. 
some kind of gremlin in the system. Jack Sock it. It's not loose. I just have to get in there and have a look. I don't have any words to say people but you, this guitar is absolutely awesome. I have an SG. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be saying that when I woke up this morning, but that's awesome. <laughs> say I mean oh my good gravy what a guitar needs another clean now okay so the only uh, there are obviously some electrical problems that I might experience in the you know, socket is a bit of a big problem that probably needs cleaning uh, that's okay though uh, select the switch is still a bit iffy I'm gonna put some more switch cleaner in that um, it's holding tune pretty good. I mean the strings are brand new. I've only, you know, it's literally just kind of like gone back into tune. This neck is fantastic. It's really skinny. It's proper easy to play and it's really... The one thing that is weird is the string spacing. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see. Let me just quickly see if I can show. So if you look at the low, where the low E is and the high E, um, I don't know if you can kind of see. Maybe, maybe it's a bit dark. But you can kind of see the string spacing is 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 very off, you know. What I mean, but it's, it's fine. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't affect it. You can kind of you can kind of I made me jump. You can kind of feel it, but it's not a major issue. You know what I mean? It's not it's not like oh no, this is all catastrophically gone wrong. You know, it's not really that much of a problem to be honest with you. The, the string spacing, you can actually do really cool things like you can you can vibrate the low E string over the top of the fretboard and get this weird sound. What's that load of reverb? Delay. That could be quite fun. So, yeah, I mean, it's not an issue. There's only like minor issues. I mean, well, it's to be expected, you know. It's, I mean, it's a 40, 40 something odd year old guitar, so it, it's going to have some kind of electrical issues, definitely. And um, like I said, the original owner said he didn't play it anymore, so I don't know when the last time he actually played this thing uh, was. So, yeah, I love those machine heads. <laughs> Crackly, crackly. But yeah, I love this guitar. It's absolutely fantastic. It really is. Um, so it's that tail piece is actually. Uh, that's. I'm talking about a second. I'm doing my head in. Um, the tail piece doesn't actually fit in the back. So this, the the, uh, the the tail piece there isn't actually. It's kind of angling forward. So that's going to have to be looked at at some point definitely 
not quite sure what's going on there. I mean, it's not an issue. I mean, it's not pulling out or anything. We'll have to we'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, but the neck pickup was fine. It sounded amazing. It sounded really lovely. It's got a gorgeous voice. This guitar has. Um, I just love it. This guitar is amazing. It's had. It's got some real honest play wear all, all over it where it's been really kind of like you know it's been dinted and dented and beaten about a bit in a really proper way you know what i mean like it's been played you know what i mean it's not it's not kind of uh it's not used and abused it's just used uh so yeah so i'm gonna have to look at this selector switch i'm gonna have to look at the jack socket um i'm gonna have to look at that tailpiece and i'm gonna have to keep an eye on that net pickle because i'm not 100 percent sure it's a particular, uh, you know, it sounds great. I mean, it's still a lovely. Oh, yeah, you need to plug it in, Dave. Uh... It's got a lovely sound to it. That net pickup's got a gorgeous sound to it. So, I don't know. There are a few issues. Nothing major. The thing plays. The thing stays in tune. Um, strap buttons will have to be moved though because it really gets in the way. Especially down here. You kind of have to like hook your hand around the strap and that's really awkward. So going to have to figure out something there. I don't know. I don't know what yet. We'll, we'll, get, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. After, I don't want to start drilling random holes. I'm going to have to really think about where to put it before I do it because I don't want to start this you know, like I said, I just don't want to start drilling loads of holes in the guitar and constantly trying to find the right place. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, this guitar is awesome. So, there we go, everybody. Uh, Rose Morris, uh, 1970s Les Paul lawsuit copy. SG, sorry, copy. Well, technically it was a Les Paul. Um, yeah, this is gorgeous. This guitar is gorgeous. This neck is absolutely amazing. The pickups are amazing. So we have do have a few electrical faults. Nothing structural though. I mean, neck's not moving about or anything like that. Nothing feels flimsy. You know what I mean? It, it all feels really solid and um, and together. You know, because sometimes you can get these old guitars, these old uh, Japanese-made guitars, and they are like death's door. You know what I mean? They're, they're really fragile and weak. Not the case with this beast. Uh, this is an absolute. This is a. This is a. This is gorgeous. This is absolutely gorgeous. So I am very, I am one happy bunny. Uh, I'm going to have to move that switch around because it's aiming the wrong way. I'd like to get it kind of, so it's a bit more like in the strat orientation. Um, but yeah, this is gorgeous. I'm going to have to see if I can find a Rose Morris badge to put in the headstock. That'd be cool to have. Um, but yeah, other than that, there we go. Uh, people with you, let me know what you think. What, yeah, what did you think this sounded like? I mean, it's, it's gorgeous. I mean, I really love it. I think it sounds absolutely amazing. It looks how I want an SG to look. It's It's got its own little individual voice. It's a really unique little voice this thing's got, and I like it. But it plays... This neck is absolutely amazing. It really is amazing. And, um, you know, the fretwork and the binding, even up, even like now, is, is holding up. It's the original nut. Just awesome. Absolutely awesome. I mean, I mean, that is a bit of an issue, the, the jack socket. I mean, that might need to be replaced. I don't know. And the select switch might need to be replaced. But I, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see. If, we'll just keep cleaning it with switch cleaner. And I'll clean the jack socket with switch cleaner. And we'll go from there, really. But, yeah, this guitar is awesome. I'm very happy to have an SG. Um, the thing that would make my dream is be that kind of like, uh, tra uh, it's not a trapeze, but it's kind of like that kind of crazy, weird kind of vibrola, I think. I don't know what it's called, but that, that was kind of like the that they were like the, the, t the icing on the cake, but I'm not going to be picky about that. This does the job, and I like it. So, um, so yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, everybody, and I'll see you again very soon for another one. I'm going to go and play this guitar all night now and just uh, get these strings settled and just have fun. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. I'll see you again very soon for another video. Have a great morning, afternoon, good evening. Oh, and have a great weekend as well. Sorry, uh, it's Friday. So uh, have a great weekend, and I will see you again very soon for another one. Uh, I'll see you on Monday. Um, if this doesn't inspire someone titled over the weekend, which it probably will. So 
It's loud. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to say, mega. Absolutely mega. So, anyway, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, but I'll see you again very soon for another one. Have a great morning, afternoon, good evening, have a great weekend, and I'll see you again on Monday for another video. Uh, goodbye. Thank you very much for watching. Ha ha!